if you want to be attracting the best talents in your partners, in your agency partners as well within your business, you need to make sure that you deliver within what's best in class for that function. So more than saying, you know, going out there and talking about how the great marketeer I am, the work that we do should talk about it. And I should talk about that work without shame. Hello, I'm Silvia Egenweiler, partner in Hydrogen Struggles Frankfurt office and a member of the Global Healthcare and Life Science Practice. In today's podcast, I'm talking to Patricia Corsi, the Chief Marketing, Digital and Information Technology Officer at Bayer Consumer Health. Patricia started her international career at Kraft Foods and then moved to Unilever for over 10 years. She joined Bayer in 2019. Currently, she also sits on the board of Tate and Lyle. Patricia, welcome and thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Hello, Silvia. Great to be here with you and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Patricia, in 2022, you launched the initiative with Bayer on creativity in consumer health. Could you tell us a little bit more about it? Uh, one of the things that we have uh, uncovered uh, recently in the past four years is that and this was coming before COVID. Health is an area that matters and it's important for everyone on this planet, no matter your age, your gender, your financial um, situation. If you do not have your health, it's very difficult that you are going to have a fulfilling life. With that said, the behaviors toward health are quite weak, mostly reactive, mostly not as a priority, everyone knows or believes they know what they should do, but very little people do it until um, they have a problem. And we noticed that the creativity behind this industry, the health and self-care industry, had something to do with that because it had been much driven on language, communication, and, and even the cues to very technical discussions. So it doesn't relate, it doesn't engage with the consumers. And we know one of the biggest forces in the world to change habits, especially for good, is marketing and communication. Wow. So this was really something that we decided we wanted to change. This is all how it started. And then last year in the Cannes Lion Festival, we have launched this initiative and really call uh, our competitors to join us because this is for the better, uh, you know, the better good of society at large. Uh, so much that we even invited our competitors for panels to discuss how we are going to propel and progress the industry forward. And so far we have really seen a fantastic response. We are seeing much better creativity coming. Uh, even for us, last year was the best year in terms of delivering communication that engage, that matters and makes a difference in consumer lives. And after COVID, there was never a better time to get, because consumers are interested in health, they really want to know about it. And, and we really, and shame on us if we don't seize this opportunity to do better. From your perspective, what are the core leadership skills needed nowadays to be a successful uh, shift marketing officer? And how do you manage to combine this role with another big role like the chief information officer at Bayer Consumer? Collaboration is a, a critical skill. If you reflect in the past, most companies and most commercial leaders they were looking to see how they could be self-sufficient. You know, the end-to-end, -end, if you are in foods, is the farm-to-fork process. How do you self-sustain anything that you need within the boundaries of your building or your office? And these times are long gone. Um, we can move much faster, much better, and deliver better value for shareholders, community, and consumers if we collaborate. So collaboration is, is one key one. The second one I would say is openness. Because if you have the, let's, let's speak from the collaboration, if you have the initiative to invite people to collaborate, but then you are not open to listen, to learn, to connect, then that's a wasted opportunity. 
So openness also allows you uh, as the leader of the commercial area, the brands that are the most valuable assets in, in any branded business to really understand the people that you're serving. So I find this extremely important. Then I'm going to say agility, especially, you know, with some of the situations we have been living and accelerate, have been accelerated in the past year, uh, agility to pivot, to act, to experiment, to know what is not working and to move fast. Uh, I think it's critical agility of learning as well. Courage. For me, it's something that uh, I think it's quite important, especially when you're thinking about your career, to have the courage to try something different, to do uh, a move that is not within your lane, to move to a different country, to live in a place where you don't speak the language, or even to make a proposal where you see many people in the room that are not in favor of that. And the last one is something that... Um, I think it changes as you grow uh, more senior and more mature. That is, you start your career mostly doing leading by doing. So you lead the actions that you have full accountability for. And when you feel that you can be the most effective and powerful um, in terms of bringing value and, um, and delivering results to the business is when you combine leading by doing with leading by influence. So your impact can be multiplied exponentially. And these are very different uh, skills than leading by doing. Uh, to understand how to compromise or when or if to compromise, to have this openness, to have this agility. So this is all things that, that come to play in leading by influencing. You've managed to um built a very diverse organization since you've been with Baya. Um, how did you do it? How did you manage to attract, retain, and develop the diverse talent in your organization? This is an area, uh, Sylvia, that I take a lot of pride because we, since uh, I'm four years at Bayer and, and since um, the end of first year, we've been the most diverse uh, function in our division consumer health. Um, and, and the best way to do it, of course, each leader will have their, their way, their format to do it. But what I saw that helps and worked for us uh, is really to create and develop this environment of growth, learning and transparency. This doesn't mean it's going to be the most comfortable environment because with, with the openness, with the courage, with the transparency, there will be moments that will be uncomfortable because we are going to push people to be outside of their comfort zone because there is a lot of learning on that. Um, so I, I would say that we had two main things is really creating this environment where people are excited about growing, learning, um, that are also prepared to, to have a transparent environment with feedback, being uncomfortable but the inclusion was the most important part because we can bring that it's easier to bring diverse talent than to keep to retain the diverse talent and the inclusion part making it an environment where everyone feels like they their voice counts and there is a performance metric that is fair and valid for everyone is extremely important and the last thing that i would say is in, at least in these areas, marketing and technology, if you do not like to be uncomfortable, I wouldn't recommend these functions uh, to anyone. Mm -hmm. Because with the pace of the change in marketing and in IT, mm -hmm. uh, if, if change is something that makes you uncomfortable and it doesn't make, gets you to be at your best, uh, it's going to be very difficult that you're going to be fulfilled and happy. So, so this, this would be the things that we look at when we are attracting talent, if there are people that they can be super skilled, super capable, but they are averse to change, that would be something that we would not bring in, for example, because that would be diversity for the sake of diversity that is not going to stay. So we would avoid that. Um, could you tell me a little bit about the lessons that you've learned in your career of the importance of 
personal branding. I love one thing that I've heard about it, that's personal branding is what people say about you when you're not in the room or having your name mentioned by others spontaneously uh, when someone is asked about a strong leader, a great talent, best in class. So this, this would be, you know, great metrics to see how your personal branding is doing. And, and I would say that the, the people that I think do it the best are the people that are not forcing it. If, if you feel like you're forcing it, then probably there is, there is something that is not uh, that great. Um, in my case, I talk and, I, and I'm probably, you know, more exposed in aspects and topics which I feel extremely passionate about. And also, I think it's important that you walk the talk on your technical expertise. So if you want to be attracting the best talents in your partners, in your agency partners, as well within your business, you need to make sure that you deliver within what's best in class for that function. So more than saying, you know, going out there and talking about how the great marketeer I am, the work that we do should talk about it. And I should talk about that work without shame. So having that, um, that behavior of saying, you know, I would do hard work and the work will speak for itself. It's a missed opportunity because sometimes we have this platform and not using it. It's, it's a missed opportunity either on, uh, you know, attracting great talent, even attracting great agencies and partners to work with you. And, and really sharing your vision. You have been working in so in different sectors, different countries through, throughout your career. Um, can you share a little bit of your learnings from different cultures, including company cultures for sure, and on which leadership capabilities matter across regions and how to create a really inclusive environment in those different environments? I think context and perspective are extremely relevant uh, on this point, Sylvia. Um, so for as an example, uh, once in my career, I have moved from a highly developed company in diversity and inclusion uh, to one that was in, in the starting development. Uh, so more on the opposite side of that pendulum. And, and it was a shock. Uh, and why it was a shock? Because I was coming from the perspective that what I had was the new norm. And of course, my expectations were relate, related and linked to that. If I had looked at this through different eyes, meaning I've learned all of this, if this company is at the starting point of this journey, I'm going to be able to help a lot because I have lived this journey somewhere else it would have been probably a much better experience than it was because it was really a mismatch of expectation. The mismatch of expectation shouldn't allow for not expecting some basic things to be, you know, to have an environment where diversity and inclusion are important, to have an environment with fairness and, and equity for, for people from different ba backgrounds. But it, it all starts with how you're building your expectation, your plan towards that. For me, this was the, the, the biggest lesson that I had uh, in terms of different companies, different cultures. And, and this is linked to the, um, to the capabilities and the leaderships that are important in this area. And, and I come back to, to the openness that I've mentioned at the beginning, to open us to sit, listen, learn, the agility to pivot, the agility to go from a place where it was highly developed to one that it was with little development, very fast and see what's the value added that you can bring. Yeah, you are a very successful executive and you juggle between work, um, covering multiple roles internally, externally, um, being a mother and so many other things, I guess. So what's your secret in making it work? Uh, look, I've, um, I think one of the best decisions I did in my life was uh, my husband. Um, I have uh, a, a husband that is uh, 
extremely supportive uh, of my career and and I cannot imagine how it would have been without his support, without him cheering me and 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 being there for me along the way and and it's the same thing with my son. Um, so I think this having a having an environment at home where they don't play to the Latin guilt is is amazing. It's something that is is fantastic. Um, I have currently three roles, so I have uh, two executive roles as the head of uh, commercial and the head of IT for Bioconsumer Health, and I also have a non-executive role uh, in Tate & Lyo in, in the UK. And I have to say that the, the number one learning is on your agenda, uh, and you have, to, you have to be ruthless about your agenda. If I look between the people that I would like to talk and connect versus the ones that I have, um, it, you have to, to, to prioritize the list. Um, I've learned to make time for myself, the best I am physically and mentally, the best I deliver for the people that are counting on me. So I save time, I wake up a bit earlier. I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm lucky because I don't need to sleep, I need to sleep. I find this very unhelpful when some people say, oh, I'm lucky, I just need to sleep four hours. Sleep is one of the most important things we, we need to do in life. And it should not be a shame to need to sleep. I think if we had more people taking care of their sleep and sleeping better, we would have less mental health issues, uh, avoidable mental health issues. So I, I do my best to sleep well. I did uh, some really great work with uh, with an Olympic coach to improve my, my sleep. Uh, I exercise and I am a full on mom. So I've never lost one of my son's event. And, and this is how you juggle a little bit. And, and people can say, oh, no, but don't you have anyone that can take care of this? I have, but I don't want anyone to be taking care of my son. Um, we, I just have one son and I don't want to delegate. This is this is one of the things that for sure it's not delegated. It's the responsibility, the daily responsibility is shared between my husband and I, which is what I we be, both believe in, um, but it's never delegated. So, And there are things that I delegate extremely well. Um, so I think having this sense of priority that your time is valuable, and I would say mostly this to women because I was very ashamed for many years to say that, that I, I needed time for myself. I'm not ashamed anymore. Um, and I think we must, uh, if you feel like this is your truth, this works for you, we should talk about it. Having the mask first in you, like they say on the plane, helps everyone around you. And, and I'm committed to that. Uh, at home, with my friends, uh, in the office, um, to be the best that I can be, to add the biggest value, I'm very clear that some moments I need time to think, I need time to be healthy, um, and that's it. So sometimes I do walking meetings with my team, Sylvia, because I, I I'm, don't want to be sitting up, sitting down for the whole day. And, uh, and they look at me and they find it odd, but everyone goes on the journey because they know there is, uh, I'm, I'm at my best. If I do the meeting sitting, I'm not going to be at my best. So. These are the things that I'm doing at the moment um, that are, I, I'm finding it very, very helpful. Um, and also not to create this image of superwoman that can do it all and etc. It's It is, you need people around you. I have a wonderful set of best friends that are there for me whenever I need. I have a wonderful husband, I have a wonderful son. Um, I have a team around me that I know is there for me when I need, and um, and this makes the burden lighter, and 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 on the um, as a response they get the best version of me. Thank you very much for your time and your really inspirational insights. Thank you, Sylvia. It was a pleasure talking to you, and thank you for having me here. And I hope um, the listeners enjoy our conversation as much as I did.